when it really gets down to it, we have to look at this thing called legacy. And that's going to live longer than us. We have to be about something that's bigger than us, that will live longer than us. Welcome to the Focus on the Family broadcast, helping families thrive. Carrie, welcome back to the microphones. Thank you. I'm so honored to be with you. Uh, Carrie, when you came last time to focus on the family, uh, you had no grandchildren. You've had a productive couple of years here. You have four <laughs> grown children, and now yeah. you have uh, nine, nine grandchildren. grandchildren. And we have five granddaughters and four grandsons. And their ages are pretty tight, right? They're yes, not... they're growing up together. It's really exciting to see and how God worked it out that way. So we have nine grandchildren, nine, and we have two that are two years of age. Okay, so here's the big question. What's the, the difference between fathering a child and grandfathering a child, other than maybe not as many dirty diapers? Well, one of the exciting things is that um, they can come over and spend the night and have fun, <laughs> and then we can send them home. Yeah, right. So do you, are you, the, you know, that absolute spoiler of your grandkids? You're totally right, Jim. I'm the spoiler. Believe it or not, my bride's major spiritual gift is hospitality, uh -oh. and she is also a <laughs> second-grade teacher. Oh. So she is very smart, very orderly, can, you know, schedule things. She sends out an itinerary, believe it or not, before Christmas, at least a month and a half, two months yeah. of all the meals, what we will be doing, who's staying in what room, and yeah. all of that. And yeah. she's just that way. And you, you go out of your way in a beautiful way to lift your bride Melanie up. Right. Um, why is that important as a grandfather to demonstrate that to your grandkids? Right. Well, um, the heritage. Now, we have to deal with the economics of life, being in the richest, most powerful country in the world. And you want to leave an inheritance uh, for your children, uh, my grandfather did that, whom I never met. But when it really gets down to it, we have to look at this thing called legacy, and that's going to live longer than us. We have to be about something that's bigger than us, that will live longer than us. Sure. And I saw that in my parents, and that's what I really seek to do. I can have title as CEO or ambassador for fathers and all of that, but when it really gets down to it, I have to model it, and I have to leave that legacy yeah. to have that testimony. You mentioned your grandfather. How did he do mm -hmm. that for you as a grandson? What did he do that caught your mm -hmm. attention growing up? Well, um, I never met my mother's dad, my grandfather, who was a pastor. Huh. And a few months ago, uh, half a year ago, received a letter in the mail from a lawyer in Radford, Virginia. And it was stating that some property is going to be sold by my aunt, the last uh, living aunt I have on my mother's side. And granddad in 1942, pastoring a church, bought property and a home, bought a home and some property. <laughs> and then um, the Lord took him home in 1945 mm. and sold the property uh, naturally in grandmother's name and then all the children. Mm -hmm. But all of them passed. My mother and all her siblings passed, so it went to the aunt. The aunt didn't want to take care of the property, so she sold it. So all of us grandchildren, believe it or not, I wish I didn't have so many cousins. But anyway, <laughs> at that <laughs> moment. At that moment. I'm glad that Jerry, bless his heart, he's in heaven, but he's passed on, so we got a little bit more money. <laughs> but the point I'm making is it talks about how you know, the grandparents, the inheritance that they have received from their parents as well, but then what they would leave. And so he made an investment. I'm an African-American gentleman. I'm so proud because they talk about how messed up our families are. But here it was, none of us ever met granddad, but we heard how great a preacher he is. But bottom line is he did something that's biblical, even as we look at Psalm 78, and he did something that was biblical, naturally living it out, he made investments. Even back then, before there was Larry Burkett, uh, Howard Dayton, and all of our great people that really helped us today. But it's not rocket science, it's in the Bible. Right. Mm. It's so good. Uh, when you are looking at the current generation as a granddad with nine grandchildren now, uh, is it a greater disconnect because of technology? 
Is it tougher to be a grandparent today because mm-hmm. they're so distracted? They're not sitting there yeah. on the porch with you much anymore. Man, sometimes right. even at the restaurant, they're just doing phones at the table. I've right. watched that. I mean, thankfully, right. Jean's been a stickler. God bless her. I mean, we nobody has a phone at our table at the Daily Household right. um, when we're eating dinner together. How, how I'm do so you, proud of y'all in doing that. How do you? Yeah, what do you do as a grandfather in this high tech, right. distracted, uh, mm-hmm. grandchild environment? How mm-hmm. do you connect with them? I do believe this, though, biblically, of how um, God made us. I look at my grandchildren and I ask them the questions like, "So, who is your dad's dad?" Who is your um, mom's mom? And you're asking them questions, and you get answers. But Melanie and I, and I believe all grandparents, we must be intentional. Hmm. We must focus ourselves, even when they have their phones. Don't belittle them. Lay down all the laws. But make it so exciting and uh, with such great depth that they want to get to know you. And that comes to asking questions, uh, you're giving them rewards and things. And I'm finding out my spirit is deeper and better now with my grandchildren than I was with my children. Sure. In, in fact, you talk in uh, Championship Grandfathering uh, about entering your grand children's world. Now, most grandparents say, there is no way. (laughs) But talk about this relationship that a grandparent must have with their grandchildren. And this applies to moms and dads as well. You you cannot just sit back and expect your children to be part of your world without being part of their world. But it's kind of a scary world to parents Mm -hmm. and to grandparents particularly because of the age gap and what they know and what they do and what they experience is Mm -hmm. so different. How, how, How do we bridge that gap? How does a grandparent enter the world of a teenager? Right. Well, one thing I'm finding with us, and like I always state in championship fathering, there are no perfect dads. So I want the dads out there and moms as well. There are no perfect fathers, no perfect grandparents, if you will. But I like to say, just relax, you exhale. Mm. But then you be very intentional, as I stated. But my father used to just uh, let me know, son, you don't get good until you're 50, 60, and 70. I shared this at chapel the other day. And um, 50, 60, and 70. But when it really gets down to it, I'm like, Dad, you ready to die? And he's like, no, son, you must experience life. And he's totally right. And so I'm finding out, why did I sweat that when I was 20 and 30? (laughs) Now I'm 61 years of age, you relax, And they will pick up on that, your grandchildren. So you got to be very intentional of how you carry yourself, how you dress. No no joke. I mean, you know, they they can call you El Nerdo and all of that, (laughs) but they will be there soon. But when it really gets down to it, even how we decorate our home during Christmas, decorated for the grandkids on their level. And so you're thinking like that, how you decorate your home. Carry that affirmation is great, and uh, you know I love that because that sounds like what we do in our home. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of the one shouting for the kids in a positive way, and, yeah. and Jean's always ready to add her amen to it, and it's fun. Things can get busy, and you know, grandparents too can be distracted, like parents. How do you have that intentionality to know? Okay, honey, today the grand kids are coming. So here, do you lay out a plan? Do you talk about it? Or is it just natural for you because of how it was modeled for you? And a lot of, a lot of grandfathers, particularly, the biggest goal in life is to maybe relax and play golf and do something that entertains them. Yeah, escape they, the responsibility. Yeah, they may mm-hmm. not be looking uh, for, for the grandparenting aspect as probably their greatest mm-hmm. moment as a grandparent. Right. It's an investment, and it's just like we go to work, we make money. That's wonderful. But the investment in your own children, my children will be my children until I go to glory. Hopefully I'll leave before them. But there's another part of that great investment. It's called grandchildren. And that's the investment in the Casey family that I must make. I cannot just uh, coast, put it on autopilot. These are some of the greatest years that I will have to continue to build my parents, uh, the heritage that I received from them. 
yeah. and then continuing their legacy. You look at our Christmas card, it well, Christmas time, we make home alone look like a joke. <laughs> I mean in our home. But thinking about when I'm gone, it mm-hmm. seemed like yesterday that my dad and mom were here. Dad and Coach Tom Landry, the Cowboys, I used to work there. They passed on the same day, February 12, 2000. But here it is. They have been gone 17 years. It seems like yesterday. Mm -hmm. But I have to work with the heritage that I've received and that investment. And you mentioned the word model. Young people need to see it. The culture needs to see it today. No matter how dysfunctional or whack we say this America is, we have some great, great options. Yeah. And that is the family and what you all have been doing for years. Yeah. But that grandparenting, it's going to a whole nother level for me with those nine bambinos. You know, one of the things, I didn't have grandparents. Uh, I never knew my grandparents. Right. But um, I remember the Hope family who led my mom to the Lord. They mm. were surrogate grandparents. I remember we'd go over there Christmas time. Uh, They didn't live far from us, but Mm. we were taken in as part of the family, and they treated us like that. Mm. Uh, They had two sons that were my oldest brother's age. And uh, so, but I remember some of the fondest memories going over there to the Hopes and uh, Grandpa Hope. We even called him Grandpa Hope. He would sit in his chair out in his, he loved having a, a kind of an atrium with a garden in it. And he had a big recliner sitting there with checkers. Wow. And we'd come over and we'd sit there and he would just take everybody on in Uh checkers, including me, the little five-year-old. You know, he taught me how to play checkers. I'm sure he lost on purpose a couple (laughs) of times just to build me up. (laughs) But that's what a grandparent does, especially a grandfather. You're totally right. Because those grandkids are looking for that affirmation in all kinds of ways. Right. But even just playing checkers, walking to the park together, Mm -hmm. maybe playing catch, if you can still do that physically. Um, It seems like a grandfather has even more impact than a dad in that way. You have that wisdom. That's Mm -hmm. what he had. He took something as simple as a game of checkers to literally help up raise up the next generation. Mm. And that's wisdom. And he knew that. And you said he had the recliner. He's just chilling. <laughs> He's chilling. Sitting All day. There. All day. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And he's sitting there with the beautiful plants. Yeah. Enjoying nature. Yeah. And as I've gotten older, there were things that I thought, as I even looked at my dad's body, it's like, I'm never going to look like that. Right. I mean, But now I look in the mirror, oh, my goodness, I'm my dad. And so my son, who has four wonderful children, I watch him. The more he comes over, the more he looks like me, dresses like me. And I'm supposed to be El Nerdo, but he's becoming just like me, my oldest son, Marcellus, who's 34. But even Chance now, who's 20, came years later. He's listening more now. Well, you know, in that relationship, uh, Carrie, there can Mm -hmm. be some tension, too, with your son, your grown son and his wife. And I'm sure in championship grandfathering, you're touching on this, which is how to maintain a healthy relationship with your kids, your grown kids who Mm -hmm. are raising your grandkids. But, I mean, everyone right now listening is going to click these off. I've got tension there. They don't like the way I discipline them when they're with me. They've asked me not to do that Mm -hmm. with the grandkids. They don't want me to buy him sugar. I mean, here's a classic, right? <laughs> they I mean, can forget that. Right. You know, they come home and they're going, Grandpa bought us donuts, Mom. <laughs> and what does Mom do? <laughs> Calls Grandpa. Grandpa, don't buy them donuts, yeah, especially yeah. 25. Right, right. <laughs> don't give them 25 of them. Yeah. But ha- how do you navigate that relationship with your, with your kids mm-hmm. and, and breathe deep and navigate all of that? Mm-hmm. Well, like anything, relationships, and I'm learning to listen to my children also, to honor them. But then, too, when you enter into that relationship with trust, and any relationship that we have, we have to have trust with your boss, with folks that work for you. Trust takes it to a whole nother level. And so when you're able to be open and honest Hmm. with your children, And they can be open and honest with you. And then you can share your desires, your wishes, and this type of thing. But it should not be too far off by you raising your children. 
because they know you. Because there are things that Marcellus does and my children do. That's your son. With, yeah, my son. They're doing now. They say, Dad, you remember you used to take us to a hotel in the wintertime and we were playing the indoor pool. <laughs> right. And so the other day, he said, after we leave you all here uh, at your home, we're going to go to a hotel. And, the ki- and his little kids, my grandkids, were so excited. Oh, yeah. And he's looking at me, blinking his eye like, like the father, tradition continues. Like yeah. yeah, the, con- yeah. the uh, tradition continues. You touched on this. I, I want to get into this uh, for a minute. The mm-hmm. idea of fatherlessness, and and by definition, grandfatherlessness in the culture. Um, what is the impact? You, you you're coming from the African American experience, although now. Mm-hmm. You know what? It's forty percent of kids, almost you got twenty-seven it. million children, black, white, Latino. Right. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter at this point. Higher incidence in the African American community, but mm-hmm. we're all going in the same direction, right? And that is fatherless homes. Right. And uh, speak from your heart about that, because mm-hmm. you mentor so many young people. Um, your football background, Fellowship right. of Christian Athletes, mm-hmm. the National Center for Fathering, and Fathers.com. I, I'd like to know how you got that. Oh, uh, yeah. We got that address. serious domain. That's a good one. But ha- how do we cope in this culture that seems to be cracking? Well, bottom line, when you talk about the family, what you all have done for years, as I stated earlier, that's the crisis, the family. We can balance the budget from the White House to the outhouse. But if we don't have strong families, and as you stated, Jim, from your background, didn't know your, uh, uh, your grandfather, your natural grandfather and all that, but every child needs a father, grandfather, or father figure. Right. Need to have someone that's going to play checkers with you, <laughs> that's going to encourage you. The kids right next door to me, I believe I've shared this before here, um, family with three boys, dad hasn't been there since Brett was two. But I'm their father figure. Yeah. But now they see grandkids running into our home also. So I am modeling this. Mm-hmm. They are going to watch you. People will know that you're a Christian by your love. Yes. And so I have to love my grandchildren. I have to encourage and love others that are in my sphere of influence. Mm-hmm. So true. And that's the thing. We have to realize, as Dr. Martin Luther King shared years ago, what affects one directly affects all others indirectly around them. If we really want to make an investment in America and say, what is it that I can do? Love God, love your family, your natural children, but then your grandchildren, the folks, our listeners today that are just saying, hey, give me some handles. But I get up every morning. The greatest thing I can do is to visit with God and to pray, give me wisdom, Mm -hmm. give me the peace that I need. And he says, I'll supply your needs also. Mm -hmm. And and here I am been in nonprofits all my life. Our needs are met. Our grandchildren think we're the richest people in the world. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know what I love is uh, sending the boys like a a scripture verse uh, on their phone. And they're at school. I do it at school when it dings. The first time I did it, Troy, Troy said to me, Dad, Man, that's buzzing in my class. And I said, well, look at it when you get out of class. But I want them to know I'm thinking about grandparenting. That door is wide open. Totally. For a grandchild to know that grandpa knows who I am, Mm. cares enough to send me a note. Mm. And uh, and it's just a great thing. Jim, let me say this real quick. What you just said just pricked my heart to no end. Mm. And the reason why, do you know how many children would love to hear their phone buzz from their father. Yeah. I'm proud that you do that. Mm. There are children that would love to hear that buzz and they have affirmation. I look at John and the children that he has and yourself. They would love to have that affirmation. And one thing we do as well in our family for years as I choose a psalm of the week every uh, Sunday night, and I text it to Melanie. Then she texts it 
to all the children. Right. And the grandchildren will be able to receive that that's one day beautiful. as well. well that's mm-hmm. a good thing for everyone to do. Just think of that little thing you could do that takes very mm-hmm. little time. Um, Carrie, in your book, Championship Grandfathering, you had an excerpt of a little boy named Jordan. He's nine. Mm-hmm. And this, to me, really begins to sum up our time together here. Let me read it, and mm-hmm. you can respond to it. Please. Jordan wrote, Four months before I was born, my real father left my mommy. He took care of her until I was born. When I came home from the hospital, there was a cradle that Grandpa made just for me. Someday, my kids will sleep in the same cradle. He rocked me to sleep, and he was my first babysitter. Now I'm nine years old, and Grandpa is my best buddy. When I was four, my grandpa spent a whole summer building me a playhouse with a big sandbox underneath it. Mm. Now he spends all his extra time building new rooms on our house so that mommy and I will have our own apartment. After he spent all day moving our big lawn, he is really tired, but he will still hook my wagon up to the lawnmower and drive me all over the place. My grandpa isn't my father but I wouldn't trade him for all the dads in the world. Mm. How does that say it? That, that's the power of a grandfather. That's the power of a grandfather. And even in our culture, when we talk about the father deficit and dads that are not stepping up to the plate, some of them didn't have someone to help to model for them. We talk about in championship fathering, loving, coaching, modeling. That's what a dad does. We found that through our research. But a lot of children today are being raised by their grandparents in this great country. Mm. And I'm so very thankful that that grandfather stepped up, and every child needs a father, grandfather, father figure. Yeah. And so there's that grandfather that stood in the gap for that young man. And let me point out, there are a lot of grandmothers yes. uh, hauling the load on that. And yes. I want to tip my hat to those grandmas. And You're on it. They're doing such a great job out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, Carrie, uh, a little bit ago you mentioned your prayers, your morning prayers. Mm-hmm. Um, are your grandkids on your prayer list? And if so, what kind of things do you pray for them? Because it, wow. it occurs to me that a championship grandfather who is a man of faith is going to, one of the greatest things he can do is pray for those grandkids. Mm-hmm. It's just like um, even uh, today, we have what you call 31 virtues to pray for your kids. That they would serve each other mm-hmm. and serve those at their school and all of this and where they are employed. But I was convicted about 10, 12 years ago in my war room, as we say. It's a Carolina room, but the Lord said, you need to pray in this room. Mm-hmm. And he led me to do something that is so therapeutic for me. And that is to write down all of their names every morning because God can do more than I ever could if I had all of them around me every day. Mm. But the things that are coming against us today, we have to realize it's going to take strong spiritual force in the way of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And so I have found as I write down their names, I can be very intentional and picture them as I pray for them. And we will have a greater opportunity. And I just love that prayer card to pray for them to have courage today. Pray on the 13th for their purity. Lord, my grandchildren, they don't even know how, well, they, they're smart. They know how to spell sex. But that they would remain pure and wait for their spouse when they're married. But to pray intentionally in that way. And God is honoring that in a wonderful way. I but I do know thing. I'm being attacked in ways that I never could imagine. Yeah. So I have to be in prayer for my dad, for the heritage I received, and for the legacy that I will leave. And I think it'd be great to post those, John, online for folks to go to. We'll look at right. those virtues. We may come up with a few of our own. Yes. But we'll create something there that people could pray over their grandkids and their kids. I'm mm-hmm. still thinking in the dad mode mm-hmm. here. And it will help the grandparents... Yeah to relax. The teams mm. that will win the Super Bowl will be the ones that keep their poise, don't lose their minds, even when it's tough. And so what I'm finding is to rest, relax, and that's what my grandchildren need to see. I love that. Of course, you played college ball, and uh, you know it's just wonderful to see that, that uh, 
championship attitude, and you've done oh, this in your book. Grand I'm humbled to be able to do it. And I honor you all in helping us get this message out in the books oh, yeah. and all that championship grandfathering and that's 21 perfect. Day Dads Challenge and all of that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's mm -hmm. good. And Carrie, it's always inspiring to have you here. I love your message, what you're doing to build people up. That's who you are, and you really learned that from mm -hmm. your dad. Yeah. And uh, we heard a little bit the other day at our Focus on the Family Chapel about the relationship you had with him. Yeah. What an amazing man. The thing I said when I got on stage with you mm -hmm. is that a great father has created another great father oh, in you and now a great honor. grandfather with uh, not a great grandfather, but yes. a wonderful grandfather. Yeah. But Tony Evans wrote our <laughs> with uh, your forward to our new book, oh, good. Championship Grandfathering, but he's a great grandfather now. And he looks younger than me, so I'm wondering how he did that. <laughs> well, for all the granddads out there, get this book, Championship Grandfathering. It'll equip you uh, with ideas and other things that you can do to be the grandfather your grandkids need. Hey, I'm John Fuller, and thanks for watching. Get more info about Focus over here and more from our guests over there. And be sure to subscribe to our channel as well.